everybody. Today we're going to be making soap using uh, quart uh, containers from like dairy products or whatever that you get at the grocery store. And um, so what I did is I just cut the tops off and then we're gonna use this as a column mold. And notice how it has a tendency to like bend and be like diamond shaped. Well, I had my son build me like a little Lego thing that fits these and helps keep them stabilized and in more of a square pattern. So I I paid him six dollars for that. <laughs> so um, the next thing that I have here, what we're going to be using for the screen lift or pour pull through design, are these little acrylic things, and they're attached on the side with a with nets or whatever those things are called. But anyway, th this is from wildplantanica.com and they, they sell a lot of these um, designs. And this one was made, Chess made this, to fit right inside these quart containers, which I thought was a brilliant idea because it's, you know, it's a standard size and anybody can, most people have access to this size container. So even if you don't do dairy, I'm sure you could just, there's other products out there. And if you buy it and you wanna use it right away, just dump it in a quart jar, stick it in your fridge, and then wash out your container and you can use it if you're in a rush. So I have a couple of these. Um, she also makes round ones for like the uh, column PVC piping molds. But what I like about these is they attach right on the side. She made a little extra hole to attach them so that it's not going to mess with the overall design or mess it up symmetrically. Um, like this one here, I could attach it in, in the center and you certainly could, but she made this like little extra hole where this ro uh, threaded rod fits right in and then secured it with the nuts, I think. I think that's what they're called. So anyway, um, and then we're gonna be pouring our soap in here, which we'll get to in a minute, and then pulling up for our design. I'm going to adapt um, these lids because I'm going to be using these bottles to pour my soap. And I'm looking for a little more control because my mold is a little bit deeper. And I wanna have a little bit more control on where my soap falls in the mold. So I cut these pi pipettes and I'm just going to use some electrical tape to tape them on and try that. Now I've never tried this method before. This is a little trick that I saw from a YouTube video, I believe from Tree Marie. So let me try this. I'll just wrap it around a few times, making sure it's tight. so that looks like that'll be good. I'll do that for my other three because I'm going to be using four different colors. All my lids are done and now I'm going to use another trick that I also found from um, Tree Marie from one of her YouTube videos and I thought this was absolutely brilliant. We're going to line these. Like some people use like bottle bags for babies that you'd put in a bottle but I have these like little like, air bubbles that you use for packaging. And I'm just gonna cut the tops off and then I'm gonna use this plastic bag as my liner. So there's the first one. And then I end up just pouring the soap in this bag and then I'll just put the lid on top. And then it won't be as um, messy to clean up. And I'm just thinking I might want to put a little, an elastic around the edge because I would hate for the soap to go in and then your whole bag falls in. That would just be more mess than had I not used the bag at all. So that should help it stay in place nicely. For my colorants that I'm using today, I'm using indigo mixed in a little bit of canola oil for my blue. I've got charcoal powder in here and turmeric powder in here. So there's a, um, a quarter teaspoon of turmeric, about one teaspoon of charcoal, 
and an eighth of a teaspoon of indigo with mixed with um, like a teaspoon of canola oil just to mix it up so it doesn't be clumpy. Um, I find the charcoal and the turmeric blend well for me so I'm not going to mix it in oil. Um, and of course I'm going to be using my plain batter for my white. And I'm going to probably use a little more white batter than all the colorants because I don't want all the colorants to kind of overpower the white and make it too colorful. So um, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get my lye water. I'm going to mix it with my oils. I have three pounds of oils here and I'm kind of estimating that's about how much it's going to take to fill in those two and a half quart size containers that I have. Um, give or take. If I have extra, I'll just throw it in a little mold. And if I don't have enough, that's okay. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Just pouring in my lye water. It's mostly cooled off. I don't take temperatures, but it's not warm to the touch or anything. Um, I'm going for a medium trace on this. I find medium trace works best, and actually a slightly thicker trace will work better than a trace that is too thin. I'm also going to be adding uh, two ounces of peppermint essential oil. my white which I will fill up to the top. Now I could have poured directly into here but I want to measure everything out first because again I'm not quite sure um, how much uh, soap batter it's going to take. Okay so I have one full plane and then these are all filled up about two-thirds of the way. I'm just going to go ahead and mix in the colorants as best I can, trying to avoid um, clumps. Now the indigo doesn't look that strong, but I think once I gel it, it's going to have a beautiful uh, blue shade, although it will cure out to a more grayish blue. And I'm using turmeric here, and although it's a peachy color now, I've found that usually when I gel it, it turns into a nice yellow. So I'm hoping for yellow. We'll see how it goes. And finally my charcoal. I'm going for a dark black because I want there to be a lot of distinction between each colors. If I just went for like a light or like a dark gray or light gray, I don't feel that there would be enough distinction in colors to make a striking design between the indigo and the charcoal. So that's why I kind of went a little heavy on the charcoal. Okay, that looks like the colors are all mixed pretty nice. And now I'm going to transfer to my squeeze bottles. Here's to hoping this works. I've never done this method with the plastic in there. And I'm really glad that I put on that rubber band Now it looks like it may not all fit, which is fine. We'll pour what we can and we'll just add more as we need to. So 
so hopefully it'll work out well. Let's see if you can see that. And just be careful not to poke your eyes on here. I'm gonna try to keep that in mind while I work. And I'm gonna do one. Um, let's start with this one where you can see. I wanna start with a taller one. I'm kind of counting to five slowly as I pour. So, one, two, three, four, five. And, oh, here's my yellow. One, two, three, four, five. actually going to alternate the white more. So I did white, black, and I'm going to do white again. I'm going to go ahead and do the indigo. I'm shaking a little bit as I squeeze, so I'm resting the bottle on the edge of the mold. It, that actually does help me. So I'm going white, black, white, indigo, yellow, white, black, white. That's the pattern. And that pour there. Now I'm gonna just grab my rod and I'm just going to gently pull up. I'm pulling up slowly because I want to make sure the pattern has a nice chance to just slowly go through the cracks and the holes. Here it comes. Okay, so that's number one. Now we're gonna go for uh, this one right here. So we'll, I'll try to turn this so you can see. Mm, hopefully. There we go. I'm just gonna cheat a little because there's a little bit of like space on the bottom where the mold, um, the thickness of the mold is where there won't be a pattern really. So instead of using my preciseness, I'm just gonna pour a little bit on the base there. There we go. And while I'm at it, I'm going to refill all my stuff so that I don't have to do that while I'm pouring.
ran out of my white and yellow, so I was using more of my indigo and black alternately in the last half of that batch. And then we have this one. So I'm going to wrap it up or with a towel, just put like a towel over it and try to let it get heat up, heat it up and gel it. Let this be a lesson that Legos don't fare well in the oven when you're trying to gel soap. Uh, it looks like my soap will be fine, but I heated my oven up to 160 degrees and then turned it off as soon as it reached the, that temperature and the Lego still melted, or the base plate did, and my son's not very happy about that. And I'll probably have feel guilty and get him a whole new Lego set. But anyway, so don't put it in the oven to gel your soap. So we're gonna go ahead and just rip um, the cardboard off and we'll cut the soap. So I'm just gonna take these right out of the Lego mold. I have my son filming for me but they came right out nice and easy um at least his lego bricks are fine they didn't sustain any damage will i have to replace those too luke yeah <laughs>